Thank you very much. I hope you can all uh, hear me. My name is Michael Pehl. I'm the uh, CEO of uh, GEMWAP. GEMWAP is a privately owned immuno-oncology company based in uh, Dresden uh, in Germany. We think we have a couple of very unique propositions as a company, starting with our proprietary platforms uh, that I'm going to uh, explain in a minute. Um, we have a pretty seasoned team of uh, uh, scientists who are very experienced in cellular therapy, uh, immunology and uh, cancer, but then also uh, a leadership team with a lot of international leadership experience in biotech. Uh, what's very unique for a company at that stage is uh, that we have through uh, um, a preferred partnership uh, with a company that is called Celex. It's co-owned uh, by the gentleman who is also owning uh, GEMWAP. They are the world leader in allogeneic Stem cell transplantation, one of the leading CMOs uh, for CAR-T production in Europe, and that is certainly uh, helping us a lot uh, in uh, producing uh, our uh, CAR-T cells. Um, we can uh, use an established uh, network uh, of Phase 1A uh, and CAR-T experience centers in Germany, uh, which is uh, helping a lot with uh, execution, um, and we have a very clear path to value inflection. A couple of words about uh, GEMWAP. The company was founded in uh, 2011. I said three platforms, two of them are cellular platform, one is a B-specific platform. So we are very active and busy uh, in, in publishing. Uh, we have more than 30 publications, hope a couple more will follow uh, in the next weeks. We have three trials ongoing with three of our assets already. Uh, the first two, GEM333 and GEM3PCA, are, are be specific <coughs> ones. They are globally partnered with BMS uh, Celgene. And we just started our first uh, cellular immunotherapy uh, trial uh, in acute uh, leukemia. Our fourth asset is going to be uh, a cellular immunotherapy uh, trial in uh, solid tumors. It's about to start uh, by mid-year. And we have a pretty deep and broad pipeline that I'm going to share with you also. So uh, what about the platform, starting with our B-specific platform, uh, B-specific antibody um, binding uh, to the uh, antigens on the cancer cell, as I, as I told you, uh, the first uh, two assets that we're having. Uh, one is against CD33 in acute uh, myeloid leukemia, and the other one is PSCA in a couple of uh, solid tumors. What's specific about this uh, uh, B-specific antibody is the other side. Uh, that's the one that's binding to the CD3 receptor uh, on the T-cell because we have a relatively low binding affinity and we also have a short serum half-life. And that's actually helping us a lot when we're thinking about the therapeutic window, in particular about the side effects. What we could show in our in vitro and in vivo models is no T-cell autoactivation. Um, trials uh, are ongoing. As said, they are partnered with BMS and uh, Celgene, and hopefully we're going to have the first results uh, by the end of the year. Shifting gears to our cellular immunotherapy platform, we have two of them, and I'm only going to focus on the one in the middle, which we call Unicar. Um, what you can see here is uh, uh, a car that is... Uh, comprised of an intracellular domain. We are using the uh, CD28 co-stimulatory domain, and there's reasons for that and that I'm going to talk about uh, in, a, in a minute. The extracellular part of the car is an SCFV. It's not binding directly to the tumor cell. Uh, in order to uh, bind and then uh, activate the T cell and expand, you need a so-called targeting module. Um, that's the yellow piece here uh, in the middle. Uh, and that has two parts. One part that is binding to the car. It's a small peptide derived from the human lab protein. Uh, and then you have on the other side the part of the, uh, of the uh, targeting module that is binding to the antigen. Um, without the targeting module, um, the T-cell or the engineered T-cell is completely inert. What I should also say is uh, that the half-life of the targeting module is very short. It's uh, below half an hour. It's also very rapidly internalized. So in clinic, what that means is you provide that by a continuous infusion. If you stop the infusion, the T-cell is shut off within four hours. And four hours, there's a couple of uh, switchable cars out there, but there's certainly no car at this moment of time that you can switch off so rapidly. And we think this is extremely important when we are thinking about less differentially expressed targets. 
couple of words on Unicar, uh, same efficacy than with a classical car. Um, we've been showing this in an AML model. We've very well established in vivo models uh, for uh, uh, the CD123 target and also for the uh, uh, PSMA target. And what we particularly like about uh, the targeting module is their flexibility. So we can use SCVs, we can use uh, uh, nanobodies, we can use uh, TCRs, we can also use small chemically synthesized peptides, um, which is actually what we're doing with our solid tumor car against PSMA, because what we're using here is a uh, PET tracer uh, against uh, PSMA. Um, so a lot of flexibility on the TM side, and we're also always using uh, the same effector cell. So the effector cell is always the same, which certainly gives us, gives us a lot of advantage when it comes to manufacturing and development. Thinking about uh, where the car space is at this moment of time, I think there's really two things um, that we strongly believe need improvement, starting with the current therapeutic window. Um, although there is uh, kind of a better treatment uh, of side effects. Um, um, now, there's still this problem of, uh, of uh, CRS, cytokine releases uh, syndrome and neurotoxicity. Uh, when you go, for example, against the classical targets like CD19, CD22 uh, and BCMA. And uh, just to, uh, to mention that the, uh, the uh, uh, real life data that has been obtained uh, with uh, the KITE uh, product shows that around about a third of the patient still has to go to the intensive care unit and every single patient uh, needs to have a reserved, reserved ICU space. And that's for the really differentially uh, expressed uh, antigens. What we are thinking about, of course, is not the CD19s and BCMAs of this world. Uh, we try to target uh, antigens that are less differentially, differentially expressed. So the risk of toxicity and long-term toxicity and even autoimmunity uh, is even higher. Um, so with our very rapid switch on and switch off, uh, as I told you, we can uh, silence and reactivate uh, within four hours. Um, and the fact that we, are, that we are giving the target module only for a limited period of time, 24 days, we think we can massively improve the therapeutic window. So that's one problem to tackle. The other problem to tackle, and especially true for the solid tumor space, is how durable uh, is the response uh, when you have a car. Uh, as, you, 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 as you may know, especially in solid tumors, there's a major issue uh, with penetration, uh, with expansion, uh, but then also uh, with the persistence. And then uh, solid tumors uh, tend to have a uh, immune suppressive microenvironment um, driven by T-Rex and, and NDSCs. And then once uh, the uh, T cell is working, uh, it's, it's uh, exhausted very rapidly. So within uh, two or four weeks, these T cells normally show the uh, exhausted uh, phenotype. And, and in addition to that, um, there is multiple escape mechanisms, uh, most prominently the antigen escape. Um, we think with our technology, we are tackling the vast majority of these problems. Uh, by using CD28, we have just a much better expansion and persistence that 41BB-based cars are having. We also have shown, and others have shown that as well, that if you're using uh, CD28, you have less downregulation by uh, T-Rex. Uh, we can circumvent this problem of exhaustion uh, of a CD28-based car uh, by just switching it off. Uh, and then, of course, we can use uh, sequential or combined targeting modules in order to cope uh, with uh, the uh, antigen escape. All the components of our car are, of course, fully humanized so that we don't have this uh, immunogenicity problem. A word about manufacturing. As I said already, we have a preferred partnership with our sister company uh, that is called Celex. Celex is uh, the world's largest manufacturer of allogeneic uh, stem cells and is also acting as a CMO for CAR-T production for uh, quite a number of companies uh, here in Europe, so very experienced. We have established a fully automated process. Our manufacturing uh, process uh, is around about 10 to 14 days. Our needle-to-needle -needle time is less than 21 days, and we think we can uh, uh, shorten that uh, further. But that is certainly helping us a lot as we are planning, executing uh, our clinical studies, um, and it's certainly also giving us a cost uh, advantage. 
to our clinical program uh, for Unical, the first target that we're having is CD123. It's an established target uh, in AML. The vast majority of AML patients is expressing it. It's also expressed in more than 90% of ALL patients. It's not on here, but there's also a high expression of CD123 in high-risk uh, MDS and a couple of uh, lymphoma. Uh, there, there were approaches with CAR-T against that target in the past that have been published. Um, um, the companies saw good responses. The problem, though, is uh, that CD123 is not just expressed on the leukemia cells, but it's also expressed on the hematopoietic progenitor cells. So if you use a non-switchable car that is swimming around and acting for the whole time, what you end up with is in a plastic patient because the uh, progenitor cells are wiped out and all these patients end up with allogeneic transplant. We think this is an ideal target for us in order to show uh, that we can switch off and switch off rapidly um, and uh, ensure uh, not just efficacy, but also a, a reliable uh, recovery of hematopoiesis uh, through the uh, uh, switchability that I was uh, talking about. The second trial that is currently in preparation, we're just doing the final touches on our IND submission. Uh, in Germany is going to be in uh, solid tumors. Um, um, the target of choice here for our TM is uh, PSMA. As you may know, PSMA is not just expressed on the surface of castrate-resistant prostate cancer, but also on a variety of other tumor modalities, uh, also on the neovascular uh, endothelial cells. So, so you have the chance to attack the tumor, not just on the surface, but also the neovasculature of the tumor. We're going to plan for a basket study in uh, prostate cancer, breast, colorectal, and non-small cell lung cancer. And the study is uh, going to start by uh, mid of the year. This is the design of the uh, first study uh, against uh, CD123 in acute leukemia that has just started. Uh, it's an adaptive design, so we are uh, actually increasing the dose of uh, of the Unica effector cells and of the target module in parallel. Uh, you can see that grid here down here. Uh, it's a so-called Boeing design and has been agreed with by uh, the German uh, authority. So each single of that squares is representing one patient. We are starting with 100 million cells, which is around about half of the dose that, for example, Kite is using for their CD28, and we're using 50% of the EC99. Uh, for the target module, and then the algorithm leads you through, and we think our sweet spot is going to be at D7 and D11, so we think we need three, four, or five patients to really validate the platform. Um, and uh, from there, we're going to start our expansion uh, using uh, uh, the, the dose. What we're also doing as part of this trial is we're doing uh, single uh, cell RNA sequencing in order to be able to show through a transcriptome uh, that after stopping the TM, uh, the T cells, uh, T effector cells are shut off after four hours. Very similar design, by the way, uh, is going to be used uh, for our first solid tumor study. Um, that is the PSMA uh, uh, study that I was talking about. All our studies at this moment of time are going to be uh, run in Germany um, um, and uh, at the time point of expansion. And we think, as I said, that we have proof of concept by mid of the year. Uh, we are going to expand to other European countries. And the plan is then also by next year to, uh, to start to include centers in the US. Last slide from my end is our pipeline. So I was talking about the two uh, assets that are partnered uh, from our B specific um, uh, pipeline. And then CD123 uh, is the first target for a Unicar cellular immunotherapy platform is in the clinic. A Unicar TPSMA to follow soon. And then we are working, doing all the IND enabling work currently for next two targets, uh, one against uh, neuroendocrine tumors and the other one uh, against the target uh, in solid tumors that shows a very nice overlap uh, also with PSMA expression, giving us the, the chance for combination and sequence studies. Um, and what we also have as a company is an ongoing allogeneic work stream, and we do that in partnership uh, with uh, two companies, as a matter of fact, CRISPR-based and nucleus-based. Uh, with that, I think I'm done. Thank you very much. In case there's any questions, otherwise afterwards. Thank you.